Uganda's economy, growing at over 6% per annum in the 2018-2019 financial year, has recovered and peaked momentum with the average incomes of Ugandans increasing to 825 US dollars per person compared to 800 US dollars in the 2017-2018 financial year. Export performance has been outstanding, with diversification leading to non-traditional cash crops earning Uganda 2.8 billion US dollars in the 2018-2019 financial year, compared to the traditional cash crops, which earned 0.7 billion US dollars. National grid electricity connections have increased to 1.3 million customers, encouraging the development of many new factories which have been opened. As a result, the proportion of Ugandan products in supermarkets has increased from 15% to 45%. In the agricultural sector, marked progress has been recorded as a result of government interventions. The NADS Operation Wealth Creation Program has continued the distribution of tea, fruit, cocoa seedlings, beans, grain seed including maize, rice and simsim, in addition to improved breeding stock for poultry, goat, dairy and beef cattle, while the National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, has continued to develop disease-resistant varieties. Irrigation schemes commissioned in the 2018-2019 financial year at Doho 2 in Butaleja District, Mubukutu in Kasese District, Wadelai in Nebi District, Tochi in Oyam District, and Ngenge in Kwen District have continued to enhance water for production through reduced reliance on rain-fed agriculture and mitigation of the impact of climate change through irrigation. The construction of small-scale irrigation demonstrations and water harvesting sites in selected districts under the nine Zono Agriculture Research and Development Institutes has also continued. Additional construction of valley tanks in drought-prone or cattle corridor districts was done alongside the construction of small-scale solar-powered irrigation schemes and multi-purpose storage dams. In order to achieve higher levels of commercialization and productivity in agriculture, extension services were enhanced by recruiting an additional 2,968 extension workers that were needed to achieve the recommended extension worker household ratio of 1 per 500. 280 tractors were distributed to farmers to further boost mechanization. Government has also rehabilitated the National Semi-Arid Agricultural Research Institute at Serere, as well as the Zono Agricultural Research and Development Institute at Rebitaba. The Bank of Uganda Agricultural Credit Facility has enabled farmers establish large capacity agro-processing facilities, expand grain trade and investments in warehousing, as well as expand farm infrastructure. In the industrial sector, under the Uganda Development Corporation UDC, agro-processing factories have been commissioned in Teso and Luero for fruit, dairy in Ankole, vegetable oil in Kalangala, tea in Toro, and the Chigezi subregions. UDC has also extended a 10-year equipment lease financing arrangement to tea factories in Western Uganda with the Chigezi Highland Tea Company Limited, Kayonza Growers Tea Factory, and Mabale Growers Tea Factory Limited. Three industrial parks are already operational at Namanve, Luzira, and Weogerere, with development underway at Mbale, Soroti, Iganga, Mbarara, and Jinja. The Kampala Industrial Business Park in Namanve currently stands at 40% complete and already boasts of 33 operational factories with an estimated 15,000 jobs created. 87 factories are under construction and 120 are at pre-investment stage. At the Luzira Industrial and Business Park, 
Nine industrial plants are operational with 7,000 employees. The Boyogedere Industrial Park has four operational industrial plants in agro-processing and manufacturing with a combined 5,000 employees. At Kapeka Industrial Park, government is providing infrastructure at Liyoshen with five factories out of the targeted 10 now operational. These include Ho and Mu Food Technology Uganda Limited, which dries fruit for export, and Goodwill Ceramics Uganda Company Limited, which manufactures tiles using more than 90% of local inputs. The construction of the Chida vehicle plant in Jinja Industrial Area kick-started with the plant forecasted to have an installed initial capacity of 5,000 vehicles per year by 2021. The plant has already created hundreds of jobs with thousands more to be available on completion. In the tourism sector, the sustained conservation of our tourism resource is what will guarantee the viability of the tourism sector. In addition to ramping up land patrols in the national game parks in order to protect tourism resources and engaging communities in proximity to the national parks to ensure heritage conservation. Over the last year, Uganda continued to promote domestic tourism as a government priority. In the 2018-2019 financial year, two editions of the now highly anticipated domestic tourism promotion drives, rightly dubbed Tulambule, were conducted in western and eastern Uganda with enhanced focus on popularizing tourism sites and encouraging Ugandans to visit and experience the beauty of their own country and resources. Tourist infrastructure has been redeveloped, including the renovation of the Museum of Kabale, Wadelai, Soroti, Fort Lugad, Bueogerere, Nyero, Kapir, Mukongoro, and Moroto have also been maintained. In addition, the Uganda Tourism Board participated in eight expos and 14 events in the international, regional, and domestic markets. In the minerals subsector, during the year, three gold refineries were set up to refine gold to 99.9%. These include the African, Simba, and Bullion Gold refineries. The Guangzhou Dongsong Phosphate Plant at Sukulu in Tororo was commissioned at a colorful event presided over by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda in October 2018. Several limestone and cement factories have been set up, while existing ones have been expanded with continued production at Tororo Cement, Hima Cement, National Cement and Kampala Cement. Total production capacity of cement now stands at 6.8 million metric tons. This has resulted in increased jobs, reduction in the cement prices, construction costs and cement imports. In the oil and gas subsector, oil companies that were granted licenses to start production are now in advanced stages of completing engineering designs for their oil fields. Construction of the Hoima Airport began in January 2018, while a selection of the oil roads infrastructure critical for the production of oil have been and continue to be worked on. In the electricity subsector, government has continued to invest in power generation. Total installed electricity generation capacity is now over 1,200 megawatts, with the coming on board of Isimba at 183 megawatts and Nyamwamba 9.2 megawatts, Nkusi 9.6 megawatts, and Wachi 4.8 megawatts mini hydropower plants. The Karuma hydropower project at 600 megawatts is progressing well. With respect to electricity transmission line projects, a total of 630 kilometers was commissioned, bringing the total length of high voltage grid coverage to 2,258 kilometers. During the year, priority was given to expansion of the transmission and distribution networks to industrial zones and rural growth centers to support the industrialization program. 
In respect to this, substations in Iganga, Luzira, Mokono and Namambe industrial parks have been completed. In addition, replacement of parts of the dilapidated network that accounts for about 30% of power loss was embarked upon. Furthermore, the use of renewable energy such as solar systems for lighting rural homes and for the national grid is being implemented. Currently, 40 megawatts of solar power is installed nationwide. Increasing the stock of road infrastructure remains a key priority with significant progress made to date. The national paved road network has increased from 3,050 kilometers, approximately 14.6% of the national road network in 2008, to 4,551 kilometers, approximately 21.1% of the national road network in the 2017-18 financial year. Government continued with road maintenance in order to preserve key investments already made using the recently acquired road equipment for regions and districts for the maintenance of district and community Maram roads. Government is enhancing efficient and effective use of the road equipment procured from Japan by ensuring this equipment is properly maintained and strictly used for road maintenance and rehabilitation of district, urban and community access roads Duka, and national roads. Construction of 600 kilometers of oil roads and upgrading to tarmac of another 400 kilometers of roads and rehabilitation of 200 kilometers of existing roads and construction of 15 bridges also commenced. In addition, rehabilitation of tourism roads and the development of the road network in industrial parks, including Mbali and Kapeka industrial parks, also commenced. Government also embarked on the construction of the Sigulu Ferry on Lake Victoria, the Bukungu Kagwara Kaberamaido Ferries, and the former Bukakata Luku Ferry. The redevelopment of Entebbe International Airport is progressing well, with a new cargo center and works for the modification of the passenger terminal building well underway. In addition, Rehabilitation works for the expansion of Apron 1 are also underway. During the year, the national airline was revived with the acquisition of two Bombardier regional aircrafts. Two more Bombardier aircrafts will be acquired as a priority for the 2019-2020 financial year. The Information, Communication and Technology ICT subsector registered significant progress during the 2018-2019 financial year. The current total optical fiber network covers 49% of all districts and 24% of the sub-counties and all the border points. The national backbone infrastructure for ICT will be eventually extended to cover all districts. In addition, internet costs will be reduced through the implementation of the new national broadband policy. As part of human capital development, there has been an improvement in access to education. The education sector has undertaken the rehabilitation of dilapidated primary schools, improved infrastructure in higher education, while civil works for teaching facilities in public universities have been completed. With support of the World Bank, civil works commenced in selected primary schools. Government procured instructional materials including bilingual dictionaries for use in teaching in local languages in primary schools, accredited six technical colleges and technical institutes at Arua, Buhimba, Mubende, Chiriandongo, Nyamitanga and Igangato International Standards, and continued civil works at technical college centers of excellence at Elgon, Lida, Bushenyi and Bukalasa Agricultural Colleges. Technology incubation centers where fresh graduates can translate business ideas into viable business enterprises have been established at Mbarara, Gulu and Makerere public universities. Government also completed construction works at Uganda Petroleum Institute Chigumba and Uganda Technical College Chichwamba. Civil works for workshops, incubation centers, teaching facilities and laboratories in eight beneficiary universities of Chambogo, Gulu, Wisitema, 
Makerere Muni Mbarara, Makerere University Business School and Uganda Management Institute have also been undertaken. Currently, 55% of all districts have technical and vocational institutions. Consequently, enrollment into business, technical and vocational training BITVET institutions now stands at 129,000. The construction of the National Altitude Center in Kaptura is at 68% completion and the Nachivubo Stadium is undergoing construction. The Uganda Cranes successfully qualified to compete at the Africa Cup of Nations AFCON to be held in Egypt from 21st June to 19th July 2019. Commendations to the Uganda Cranes for this stellar effort that sees Uganda make its second consecutive return to the AFCON after ending the 39 years of absence in 2017. Government's goal for the health sector is to increase universal health coverage with essential health and related services needed for promotion of a healthy and productive life. Construction, expansion, rehabilitation and equipping of Mulago National Referral Hospital and its transition into a super specialized facility is in final stages with construction currently at 97%. Construction of the 320-bed specialized women and neonatal hospital at Mulago National Referral Hospital was completed and handed over in November 2018. It is functional and offering first-class services to the women and newborns. A specialized regional center for pediatric surgery is under construction in Entebbe. The Kaolo General Hospital has been rehabilitated while well, rehabilitation work will start at Wusolwe Hospital in the 2019-2020 financial year. With support from the World Bank, government has also undertaken the upgrade of 124 Health Center 2s to Health Center 3s in 99 local governments. Increasing access to clean and safe water remains a critical objective for government. Rural water coverage is now at 71%, while the urban water coverage stands at 80%. 38,200 villages, representing 66% of the total villages in the country, have been served with clean water. Rural sanitation coverage now stands at 79%, while sanitation coverage in urban areas is at 87.4%. In order to maintain peace and security and good governance, over the next financial year and the medium term, government will continue to professionalize the Uganda People's Defense Forces UPDF through the procurement of equipment and training. Government will also begin the implementation of the electoral roadmap for the 2021 general elections in pursuit of democracy and good governance. Priorities to increase access to justice include the automation of court administration systems and construction of new justice centers. Justice centers provide a one-stop center for operations of the Uganda Police, Directorate for Public Prosecutions, and the Judiciary. Reduction in prison congestion will mean putting into operation the Chitalia Minimax prison and five other reception centers. The National Community Service Program will also serve as an alternative to incarceration. The Safe City project involving installation of closed-circuit television CCTVs was implemented to improve security. Fast-tracking implementation of Safe City infrastructure will include rolling out installation of CCTV to municipalities and urban centers. With respect to citizenship and immigration, Ugandans continue to be registered with more receiving their national identity cards. E-passports and the automation of work permits, visas and passes was also implemented to improve the quality of immigration services with commencement of the use of the new East African passport. The Uganda Revenue Authority offices were completed and are now fully occupied while construction at the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda is ongoing. 
The 2019-2020 financial year budget seeks to deliver inclusive growth and development for the vast majority of Ugandans. It seeks to further build on the significant gains achieved in socio-economic transformation by ensuring gainful employment, increased incomes and greater wealth for Ugandan households. It remains imperative that the youth and women of Uganda seize opportunities that will build their skills and permit them to engage in productive work and also establish business enterprises where they can. Farmers must cooperate and participate in the process of agro-industrialization in order to fully benefit from higher rewards to their efforts. This will not only enable households to improve production and productivity, but as a consequence, incomes will rise and new jobs will be created. This will lead to sustained growth and development of this, our beautiful motherland, Uganda. <laughs>